This video is brought to you by MUBI, a curated online cinema streaming exceptional films from around the globe. Get one month free at MUBI.com slash the discarded image. What's the role of close-ups in film? In the most simple terms, they highlight a single moment. They tell the audience, this is something significant that requires your full attention. It could be a coin toss during a duel that will decide the fate of a character's life. It is heads. The turning point when a group betrays their leader. A military code that will lock an entire civilization into a doomsday scenario. The work that has kept an insane man busy all winter. When Kubrick shoots someone in a close-up, it's an event. And being renowned as a great chess player, he's strategic with his use. The close-up is Kubrick's queen. You're going to take my queen. That is my intention, sir. Of course, this shot is part of any filmmaker's toolbox, as an element of basic scene construction. And Kubrick certainly knows how to use it that way. So let's start there. In Eyes Wide Shut, this is the pivotal scene where a couple's marital bliss starts to unravel. So on that basis, I should conclude that you wanted to fuck those two models. Kubrick covers it pretty liberally, shooting a variety of shot sizes to cut between the drama that unfolds. He saves the biggest close-up for the end of the scene, when Bill is taken aback after the revelations of his wife's sexual desires. And I thought if he wanted even if it was only for one night. I was ready to give up everything. This big, centrally framed close-up puts the viewer in his troubled mindset. As for the rest of the narrative, we will follow Bill on a sexual odyssey that all stems from this moment. This scene is more conventionally constructed, but there are numerous examples where Kubrick is more unorthodox with his coverage. Compare the above to Bill's first stop on his night of adventures. He meets with the daughter of a patient who has just died. This grieving woman, it's revealed, seemingly has passionate feelings for the doctor. She's presented almost entirely in close-up, and the shot allows the viewer to pick up on her subtle gestures. Bill is unaware of her desires. He's there in a professional capacity, and is framed from a greater distance. The shots create a disparity of emotion between the characters. We barely know each other. Another strategy Kubrick will deploy is playing a setup at length and withholding a close-up for maximum impact. Hello. Here in The Killing, Kubrick presents another couple in marital disarray. Well, what are you going to do, George? Sherry Peaty knows her husband, George, is planning a robbery and for her own selfish reasons, wants to know whether it's happening that day. Your problems will be my problems. Whenever you're worried about something, like now, for instance, is it the robbery? Is that what you're worrying about? Sherry faces us, so we can watch her manipulations. George is blocked in profile, which is in line with his mindset in the scene. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that the way it sounded. I deserve it. He's divided. He's trying to be present with his wife, but his mind is really on the robbery. It's just I can't stand living like this. It's a crummy apartment and a hamburger for dinner. You haven't been so bad. To get his full attention, Sherry plays on his insecurity and jealousy. I was going to tell you something about your dear friend Johnny, but since you feel about him like you do, I take his word against mine. She succeeds, and we get this shot. What about him? What were you going to tell me? Similarly, in this scene from Doctor Strangelove, group captain Lionel Mandrake slowly comes to the realization that General Ripper has lost his mind. But we as an audience are kept in the dark, because for the bulk of the scene, Kubrick holds off from showing Ripper's face. He's cut off from us, which accentuates how confusing his words and actions are to Mandrake. Group Captain, the planes are not going to be recalled. My attack orders have been issued and the orders stand. It's not until the end of the scene that we cut to an expressive, domineering low angle close up, which finally reveals the extent of his lunacy. It's the infamous Kubrick deranged close up his calling card. This particular brand of the close-up gives us a glimpse of humanity's ugliest states of mind through the gaze of these characters. The primordial lizard brain has taken over. Kubrick often focuses on humanity in groups rather than individuals, whether it's apes, soldiers, droogs, 
sex cults. So when he stages a sequence with a solitary close-up on a character or object, he forces the viewer to question its significance. In 2001 A Space Odyssey, the first extended dialogue exchange in the film is mostly covered from wides, so we can focus on the group dynamic. Well, no, no, please. You see Dr. Floyd on the defensive, leaning away from the group, and Dr. Andre Mislov on the offensive, hulkily leaning forward. The conversation is civil, and whilst Mislov is polite, he's intent on getting information. At the risk of pressing you on a point you seem reticent to discuss, may I ask you a straightforward question? The scene's only close-up is for this crucial moment in the exchange. The close-up brings drama to an interaction that isn't clearly confrontational. But frankly, we have had some very reliable intelligence reports that quite a serious epidemic has broken out at Clarius. Something apparently of an unknown origin. Society has moved on from apes clubbing each other with bones, yet territorial aggression, in this case between countries, is still very much present. It's just much more so. In the Full Metal Jacket boot camp sequence, we get general coverage of the recruits going through their training process, coming together as a regiment. However, Kubrick singles out a close-up of Private Cowboy, looking at the one member of the group, Private Pyle, who is letting the side down. The shot is a key indication of the anger building up in this character, who becomes the key instigator in this group, rallying his fellow recruits to attack Pyle. One of the most effective ways to use a close-up is to juxtapose it in the edit. These shots from the film's opening show the recruits losing their last remnants of individuality. In the following sequence, the soldiers that are framed in close-up are now in a wide shot, lined up in rows. They are uniform, barely indistinguishable from each other. Arguably the most iconic juxtaposition in movie history is made up from that same contrast between a close-up and a wide. The leader of a group of hominids discovers an animal bone can be used as a weapon, giving him the edge on his adversaries. The bone is tossed in the air to visually match a military spaceship many centuries later. The bone is shot in close-up, the ship in wide, which creates a dissonance in perspective. The juxtaposition illustrates the significance of the primitive tool, which in terms of size would only make up a tiny fraction of the space weapon. A small bone for man, a giant leap for humanity. The close-up is itself a primitive tool, one that's been with us since the early days of cinema. Yet because it's so commonplace, it's easy for a filmmaker to overuse it. Kubrick made films for the big screen and understood how powerful the close-up can be when it towers above you. And as a great tactician, he knew this power would be magnified when deployed with patience and restraint. It's one of the many reasons his films are so impactful. I'd like to thank Mubi for helping this video get made. Whenever I look through their hand-picked streaming service, I always find something that piques my interest. Recently, they've launched seven new curated strands where they exclusively premiere recent art house hits that would otherwise not be available outside the major film festivals. These strands include celebrations of first-time filmmakers, as well as tributes to the new auteurs who are currently emerging on the scene, and of course, our established masters of cinema. They also highlight adventurous and experimental films that push boundaries, and the very best in new short cinema. They love to showcase what is happening in every corner of the film world, whilst at the same time commemorating restored classics that should be on every cinephile's watch list. You can try Mubi free for 30 days at mubi.com slash the discarded image.